From its groundbreaking debut all the way back in 1999 to present day, the Tony Hawk series is one of the most beloved franchises in video games. Starting out with the Tony Hawk Pro Skater series, it became a cultural phenomenon bringing skateboarding to the masses. It was the perfect mix of unique, easy to pick up and learn but hard to master controls, top tier soundtracks and many cool features like the ability to create your own skate parks and multiplayer mode later on, and it made the series fun for everyone. Now I've never ridden a skateboard in my whole life, but Tony Hawk's Pro Skater controls feel so natural and like many of us I spent hundreds upon hundreds of hours on these games. The first four Pro Skater games were classics, then the franchise would move into a more story based mode with the underground series American Wasteland, Project 8 and Proving Grounds. These original titles were all developed by Neversoft with various studios handling ports to different platforms. And while the franchise had some stumbles along the way and fizzled out in around 2016 as skating became less popular, the Tony Hawk franchise has never really been off gamers' minds for too long, with both new fans and returning fans experiencing Tony Hawk Pro Skater in more recent times with the 2020 remaster of the first two games. And just more recently, the announcement of Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 and 4 due later in 2025. But there's a more interesting side of the Tony Hawk franchise that you may have not known about. Did you know that the Tony Hawk games have been responsible for hacking consoles across three separate console generations? That's right, we're talking the PlayStation 1, the original Xbox, the GameCube, the PlayStation 2, and now even for the very first time, the Xbox 360 can be exploited all by running a Tony Hawk game, with no other hardware modifications or anything else required. It sounds pretty crazy, doesn't it? but it's absolutely true. The common theme here is that many Tony Hawk games have weak points where they can be exploited to allow for unauthorized code execution on the target hardware. This is generally in the form of a secondary program that can boot into a program to set up a homebrew exploit or some form of custom menu. And it is important to note that the Tony Hawk games themselves won't hack your console, but it does allow for security researchers an entry point to run their own custom code to bypass or hack security measures of the console itself. The common theme between all these Tony Hawk games is that there is a way to corrupt memory known as a buffer overrun. And it's generally done by using a string copy command where you deliberately or otherwise copy a block of characters larger than the string size itself. Now, if you're still not sure what I'm talking about, let's go ahead and look at a quick example. Now let's take a quick look at how we can actually do a buffer overrun with a piece of code. Now this is a very simple C program that has a struct of two character arrays. One is first name that has a character length of eight and then the last name has a character length of 12. These are obviously very narrow just to kind of prove the point here, but you can see we're initializing a type of details. And then these are the two lines where we're copying in these strings. Now the first string we're copying in is in the last name field and that is were made in 2025 and obviously this string here is larger than 12 characters so this is deliberately kind of overrunning the buffer and the second one is the word mistakes which is actually eight characters long and we only have a first name of eight characters which seems to be okay but of course we have to kind of terminate this string as well so this is also performing a buffer overrun and you can see that the compiler is letting us know that this is going to be an issue so let's go ahead and run our program for the first time here and we'll just watch the memory on the details structure and you can see here that it's all been zeroed out so all these zeros let us know that this particular mem set where we're basically just clearing out the memory of this particular block here in memory is has been done. So now if we go ahead and copy our first string were made in 2025 into last name, obviously this is a overrun. You'll see that these particular hex values get updated, which means that code is being written to in memory. And you can see the text were made in 2025 just fine. Now, if we go ahead and copy the word or the string mistakes into first name, watch what happens to the memory. You see that the word mistakes gets written in, but it completely clobbers what the last name field was 
were made in 2025. And this is a corruption of the stack and Visual C++ is going to tell us that. But if you do build a release version and then just release this executable out into the wild, you won't see an runtime error like this come up at all. It's just going to run in some type of unknown state. And this means that a security researcher or a hacker can then basically modify parts of this overrun to effectively branch out into another piece of code and execute some type of exploit chain and set things up from there. Many Tony Hawk games suffer from these weak points where a buffer overrun can be forced. But how do you force a buffer overrun on a game that comes on disk that's read only? Well, that's pretty easy to answer. It's simply by using save games and it's possible to hack a save file to locate the string that could be overrun with some other text. And this is a common theme across many of the Tony Hawk games. Now the developers weren't being malicious deliberately, rather the string copy command in C is considered unsafe for this reason, because it's very easy just to have a string that is larger than the string size it's being allocated for. And when we're talking about video games with millions of lines of code, it can be very difficult to locate and identify these overflows, especially if it's not as obvious as the example that I just posted. Memory management is extremely important in C and C++, and if you don't know what you're doing, you can easily corrupt the stack. And even if you do know what you're doing, humans make mistakes. And this is why every single video game console since the beginning has been exploited in one way or another. So let's take a look at the various consoles and how Tony Hawk was responsible for exploiting them. The first example is on the PlayStation 1, an exploit that works with Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, 3 and 4. It allows for booting of burnt CDs from any region. Now of course a mod chip will do all this for you, but we're focusing on software exploits only. And the way Tony Hacks works is that the game does not check that the text in a save file has not been tampered with. By overflowing the character name in the create a skater menu to one that's abnormally long, it overwrites vital parts of system memory and an exploit can be run. This exploit will perform secret CD unlock commands found in the PlayStation 1 BIOS to allow for any CD, regardless of Wobble Groove security, to boot just fine. And we talked about this hack about three years ago on the channel. Initially, Tony Hacks was designed for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, 3, and 4, but since then, more games have been added that have similar buffer overrun issues in their save files. When it comes to the original Xbox, soft modding the console via hack save game entry points like Splinter Cell and Mech Assault have been known about for years, but just last year, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 and American Wasteland have also been identified as exploitable games. This was outlined by security researcher Grim Doomer, who made an extensive write-up and a video on the topic itself, outlining in detail how string copy can be exploited in the create a park functionality of the games. The park editor allows the user to create custom levels and create gaps, which is the area between two platforms that you can jump over. The name can be up to 31 characters long, but by overflowing the gap name in the save file, it's possible to trigger a stack overflow and get control of the CPU instruction pointer. From here, it's possible to execute shellcode, which can then gain full code execution of the hardware. This very same exploit was ported to the Sony PlayStation 2 and the Nintendo GameCube, albeit with some minor differences, and they do exactly the same thing. In the case of the Nintendo GameCube, it's just as easy to launch into something like Swiss, a very popular homebrew and backup loader. Then we turn to the Xbox 360. Microsoft learned much from the original Xbox hacking scene that they secured the hardware with the all-seeing hypervisor, which will stop any unauthorized code execution dead in its tracks. The first step of the process is to dump your CPU keys, but in order to do this, you must need to get code execution on the hypervisor. And to dump the hypervisor, you have to read the contents of the hypervisor and dump it from flash. And this particular flash is encrypted with a per console CPU key and of course, all RAM is encrypted. This is why traditionally there's only ever been hardware modifications for the Xbox 360 to both A, dump the flash and extract the CPU key, and B, allow the system to boot into a custom flash with either a glitch hack or JTAG. However, everything has changed because recently a non-persistent software-only hypervisor exploit for the Xbox 360, which does work on the latest software version, has been released to the wild, known as Bad Update, it allows Tony Hawk's American Wasteland and the very same buffer overflow code in the Create a Park feature 
to kick off an exploit chain to ultimately run unsigned code. Now once again, we have to be clear that Tony Hawk's American Wasteland is responsible for the entry point. The heavy lifting of the bad update exploit is further down the exploit chain. Right now it only has a 30% success rate, but it is proven to work and execute unsigned code on latest firmware with a stock motherboard without any hardware modifications, including the latest Winchester motherboards. And as a side note, I'm very interested in covering this on the channel and I will be doing so in the future, but I'm waiting for the dust to settle as there's quite a bit of activity going on right now where I feel like this week if I made a video it would soon become out of date. Now in case you're wondering, how is it possible to hack an Xbox 360 save file? We just said that the hypervisor would stop this from happening. Well, the hypervisor is very secure in what it does, but it doesn't cover the entire footprint of the hardware. Save files are treated a little differently on the hardware in that they can be transferred from one system to another. Think about it this way. If a user has two Xbox 360s before cloud saves to transfer them from one Xbox 360 to another, you would use a memory card. But to stop malicious activity, each Xbox 360 has a key vault with its own private key used for signing save games. So you can take save games from console A and then load them on console B. And then console B can verify console A's signature based on the public key certificate that's embedded in the save. Again, this is not new information, but it does allow for save games to be exploited. And there you have it, the Tony Hawk series has been responsible for hardware exploits across three generations of video game console. Now of course, most of these games are exploitable simply because the create a park feature or the create a skater feature exists in many of the games and this code was obviously brought forward. We also have to remember that these exploits that involved Tony Hawk games were discoveries made long after the systems were originally hacked and much of the time they aren't very practical in 2025. But guess what? They all work and in a pinch, if you do need to exploit an old console, you can use a Tony Hawk hack to do so. I do think that Neversoft, if they were made aware of this particular save game exploit back in the day, would have probably patched it out and nipped it in the bud pretty early on. But this would be like cutting the head off a Hydra. And this is because Tony Hawk is certainly not the only game series that has save file exploits where a buffer overrun can occur. But we're going to leave it here for today's episode. Let me know what you think about the Tony Hawk series exploiting game consoles all the way back from the PS1 to the Xbox 360 in the comments below. And as always, if you like this episode, please don't forget to leave me a like and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.